Uh, so everybody's complaining about you know, Nikki Haley saying one thing, and uh, you've got Tillerson saying another thing. Uh, First time that's ever happened. McMaster is saying, hey, it's all consistent. Yeah. What are you doing when you're following the administration? Are you listening more to McMaster, or is there sort of a, is there sort of a Cy Vance, a big Brzezinski give and take in this administration? Um, there's nothing that defined. What we have are multiple goals. But it's over at very different time horizons. In the short run, we've got to go after ISIS. We just acted against Syrian use of CW. The goal of ousting this government, of regime change, is years and years is away from us. I'm not quite sure why we're talking about it that much, because we can't make it happen. We're not right. even ready for it. We don't have something to put in its place. Right. What we should be focusing on now is going after ISIS, making sure the Syrians don't use CW again, and beginning to create a Sunni opposition that can take territory that's liberated in Syria. Yeah. And over the next couple of years, they will be able to perhaps be partners in getting rid of this regime. By the way, for the kids at home scoring with it, CW chemical. Weapons. I apologize. Correct. Not the network. All right. Two senior White House aides <laughs> held lengthy meetings at Mar a Lago in an attempt to mend a rift that has caused many to speculate a change in White House staff is imminent. According to the New York Times, uh, President Trump himself ordered senior advisors Jared Kushner and Steve Bannon to, quote, work it out. White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus organized the hour-long meeting last Friday. Sources tell NBC News that Priebus told the two advisors to stop the backbiting and that, quote, if you don't like it, then move on. One source says Bannon's message was, quote, Democrats will never run the White House. The comment apparently refers to both Kushner and senior economic advisor Gary Cohn, who are believed to be Bannon's rival. For power, he has reportedly nicknamed them the West Wing Democrats. This is, I, just, I just get separated this is silly. really quickly. Okay, this is so ridiculous, and the reporting of this has been so ridiculous. Anybody that wants to bet against Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump <laughs> need only call Corey Lewandowski. Like this is stupid. This is some of the stupidest reporting I've ever seen in my life. Where people go, well, the Bannon, you know, Bannon may do this, and we. We don't really know how this is going to turn out. You do know how this is going to turn out, okay? Jared and Ivanka are going to be there. Steve Bannon is isolated inside the White House. This is, you know, people go, oh, well, is Joe, does Joe not like Steve Bannon? No, I'm just telling you the truth. Steve Bannon is isolated now inside the White House. Uh, everybody has run away from him. He made the mistake, and nobody knows why, two weeks ago, of starting to trash Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. Not a wise move. But he made that move, and he is living with the ramifications of even past allies. So before you write your stories today about Bannon's allies inside the White House, check your sources, okay? And if their last name is not Bannon, the sources are wrong. Bannon's alone uh, inside the White House now, Mark. And uh, the other narrative that kind is of just looks like the Saturday Night Live character false, now. Patently false. Patently false. Is that Reince Priebus is in trouble, or that Reince Priebus was ever in trouble? And the only reason I'm I, I, I'm a little uh, animated here this early in the morning is the reporting was just so wrong. <laughs> you know and. Maybe Bannon was leaking it about Priebus to get the attention off of him. Wright's Priebus is going nowhere. Write it down, folks. And Steve Bannon probably going somewhere, or he will do what Kellyanne Conway did and just sort of slip into the woodwork of the White House mm -hmm. and never be seen or heard from again. There's a lot of chaos in this White House, and one of the things Reince Priebus has done quite well is just get things up and running, the flow of paper, the flow of personnel, relations with the Hill, and that's badly needed, and there are a lot of people in the White House who see that he is doing that work and that needs to be done. All of this, you know, the personnel stuff obviously is important and it's interesting to people. They've got to decide what they're going to do now. They've got a two-week congressional recess. They've got a legislative agenda that's, you know, what, what are they going to do about health care? What are they going to do about taxes? That is, to me, the big question is how people like Jared Kushner, Steve Bannon, who are still there today, how do they get the legislative agenda up and running? Is it ideological or is it just practical? Well, and, and this is why it matters, okay? This isn't just palace entry. It matters whether this is Steve Bannon's White House or whether Jared Kushner and Cohn and Ivanka 
uh, and Dina Powell and that group are are are, are helping in, inside the White House. And the difference is Bannon will say to people, you know, it's my vision, it's my White House. Mm -hmm. Jared and Ivanka and Gary Cohn and Dina Powell will say it's Donald Trump's White House, well, that's which is the difference. Bannon really does think that he created Donald Trump. Well, that's that's the most interesting aspect of the story, and it gets to the most endlessly fascinating topic that all of us witness each and every day, human nature. Yeah. Human nature, reading the lines of the Steve Bannon stories or reading in between the lines of every Steve Bannon story, you clearly have a man here who thinks he created a presidency. And by the way, just I, I, just going to stop you here for one second. The Trump people, including the president of the United States, can tell you to the day how many days Steve Bannon has been around. <laughs> and they give you the number of the day that Steve Bannon's been around. They tell you exactly when the Mercers came in. All of these Johnny-come-latelys that claim they created Donald Trump. Donald Trump and everybody around Donald Trump will say, oh, Steve Bannon created me. Oh, he was around for, and then they'll give the number of days. So that's at one level. And then you take the jump into the White House, where you now you know, have President Donald Trump, and you have Steve Bannon still, again, human nature, thinking that he, because he created the presidency, it's now his job, and he has the authority to mold and manipulate the presidency. And yet, in terms of creating the presidency, all of us were present on that day that night in Manchester, New Hampshire, freezing cold night when people weren't coming out of their homes, and yet 6,000 people showed up at the Verizon Center right. on Elm Street in Manchester. And by the way, do they come out for Steve Bannon? No, that's the point. <laughs> Not a lot of them. That's, that's, that's <laughs> what I, I mean. Any of them and, and what about the Mercers? By the way, no. the Mercers were working for Ted Cruz at the time. I mean, that's the insanity of this. And I've said, that's such a great point. It's snowing outside. They don't think anybody's going to come. No. The candidate's late. The can yeah, fighting through and they the snow stay. to get there. It, it causes you to go, hmm. They pack it with 6,000 <laughs> people. Steve Bannon wasn't even, I mean, Steve Bannon I was not even well, anywhere near the there. But he really does believe, and he has believed that I have created Donald Trump's nationalist There are platform. some very hopeful things. By the way, I got to I got to say this. I okay, say, and I then gotta, I'm going I gotta to say this. Steve share King, another piece of news. Steve King uh, tweeted something uh, which the the the, the congressman? Yeah. Woo. Steve Bannon <laughs> is the linchpin to your energized base, Donald Trump. Conservatives are an endangered species in your White House. I'm going to read that again. Steve King, a congressman from Iowa, says that Steve Bannon is the linchpin to your energized base. Again, that's what Steve Bannon's telling all of his allies to say. The energized base fought the snow in New Hampshire in February when Steve Bannon was still, what, six months away from even working on the campaign? But now he's Edgar Bergen. Yeah. yeah. Now okay. he thinks... And He's Trump the power behind the throne. Yeah. I mean, Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.